Welcome to Cadence Design Systems Pointwise Tutorial Tuesday, where we show you how to use a feature or demonstrate a technique in just a few minutes. Fidelity Pointwise 2022 Release 2 includes three new features. In the previous video, I gave a walkthrough of the new grid elevate command for elevating and exporting high order meshes, and I briefly discussed the performance improvements to the unstructured block smoother. This video will focus on the updates to automatic surface mesh. Let's jump right into Fidelity Pointwise. Here we are in the Global tab in Automatic Surface Mesh. If we expand the Advanced Frame, you will notice two new controls, Min Allowed Edge Length and Min Allowed Radius of Curvature. These are intended to limit over-refinement, especially due to locally high and even unrealistic surface curvature. Going over to the Surfaces tab, you will notice checkboxes in front of the Resolution and Mapping Frames. These frames are now mutually exclusive, meaning that you can only edit one filter type at a time. The resolution filters haven't changed, but opening the mapping frame, we can see that this interface is quite different. The table is now read only except for the name and set checkboxes, and selecting a row in the table brings up a new frame underneath that contains all the controls for defining the filter. Max aspect ratio allows you to locally override the global max aspect ratio. Distribution allows you to specify the distribution type for the short edges of the domain. Automatic clusters towards the long convex edges while equal uses an equally spaced distribution. An adjacent boundary type allows you to specify how the long edges are treated in the adjacent surfaces during 2D T-Rex. Automatic uses the boundary filter settings for the long edges and adjacent grid uses an adjacent grid treatment. If you have a situation where the short sides of your map domain are of very different lengths, like a tapered trailing edge, we highly recommend using the equal distribution with the adjacent grid boundary type. Otherwise, the automatic settings work quite well. At the bottom of the frame, you can see a separate table for specifying the filter pattern. This operates similar to the boundary condition filters in automatic volume mesh and allows you to quickly build up more complex pattern definitions than the previous comma delimited list. Finally, going over to the boundaries tab, this filter table has also been simplified and again is read only except for name and set columns. All of the controls have been moved into the filter frame below. Use the drop down to set the type and the text box to edit the value. There's also a new type called explicit, which is the equivalent of a 2D T Rex wall BC. You can now specify a per edge growth rate and number of constant layers, and locally define minimum edge length and minimum radius of curvature. As an added bonus, these four parameters have also been added to the Boundary Conditions tab for 2D T-Rex. And finally, for angle and explicit filters, you now have the option of also specifying a maximum aspect ratio to better control the transverse spacing in the resultant connector. I've already run ASM with the default settings. Let's take a look at a few regions. First, the wingtip has some very high curvature that is being resolved resulting in an edge length of about 0.01, which is way more resolved than we actually want to capture. Since this is the smallest feature in the geometry and the trailing edge is about 0.5 units across, I'm going to set the global minimum radius of curvature to 0.25. Next, there's some over-refinement on the edge between the fairing and the fuselage, resulting in edge lengths of about two units. The radius of the fuselage is about 120. Let's use a minimum radius of curvature here of about 10% of the fuselage radius. And finally, our global max aspect ratio is 10, which works well for most reasons, but it would be preferable to allow for a larger aspect ratio along the leading and trailing edges. Let's increase the aspect ratio to 50, and let's use the same aspect ratio for the leading edge. And we'll also use the same aspect ratio for our mapping filter. Now we're ready to rerun ASM. Okay, so now let's look at the results. The wingtip edge length is now about an order of magnitude larger. The fairing also looks much, much better with edge lengths now of about 6 to 7 instead of around 1.5 to 2. And finally, looking at the trailing edge again, we have now much larger aspect ratios, closer to 50. If you like this video, be sure to click the thumbs up button or subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, drop us a line below or connect with us via LinkedIn, which is linked in the description. Thank you all and have a pleasant Tuesday.